Today I'll show you how to uh, put a Spartan front locker in, or really any type of locker. A uh, seven and a half inch Toyota front axle. I think those are also similar to some of the rear, like Supra axles, and uh, probably a bunch of other things that Toyota makes because all their parts are kind of interchangeable. Um, I would highly recommend running one of these lockers if you are going to be rock crawling and wheeling a lot in your IFS truck. Um, I ran one in mine on 31 inch tires. I was also rear locked um, and it performed awesome. I did have a 4.7 transfer case, which I feel like is necessary to really see the benefits of the locker. If you had normal gears, you're gonna be just having to throttle it up anyway, any, everything anyways. Um, so the lockers probably aren't gonna, you're not gonna notice them as much as if you do have the low gears so that you can really crawl and let the tires slowly grab their way into things. Um, I was able to steer just fine with my stock IFS steering um, with the locker and four wheel drive um, in like technical like rock stuff. It was a little tougher to turn. So I ended up putting a twin stick in the transfer case. So that way I was able to quickly go from two wheel drive to four wheel drive while in low range. Um, and I would pretty much own, I would just drive it around in two wheel drive low range on most trails. And then once I got to a big rock obstacle that I wanted to crawl over, move the other stick into four wheel drive, crawl right up it and then pop it out just so that I didn't put as much uh, stress on the steering and it made it easier. Um, but when you're in like two wheel drive and have the hubs still locked, so the whole front axles locked up and not connected to the, the drive line, um, no issues there, super easy to steer. Um, and I had no issues breaking axles or uh, breaking other parts with this. I was on 31 inch tires though. Um, so your results may vary if you're going bigger than that. But yeah, this is a pretty simple install. Uh, helps a lot if you have an impact, helps a lot if you have these torque wrenches, um, but definitely easy enough for a novice to do. So this install is also the same if you were going to be doing um, an ARV locker, other than you'd have to run the little airline hose, um, or I think you can get a, a true track or a Torsen, um, and some like LSD type stuff, super LSD, um, where, but once you get to the point where I'm doing all the carrier stuff and installing the Spartan locker, instead of messing around with the factory open carrier, you just throw that in the scrap bin and just install the ring gear and reinstall everything onto your new uh, ARB or whatever uh, carrier locker that you're going to be putting in. The first thing you're going to want to do is get your front diff pulled out of the truck, diff cover off, uh, oil all drained. Um, try and get the outside cleaned up as best you can or else you're going to get a lot of crap inside which you don't want to do. Um, and then get it up on the bench so you can start tearing it apart. To, remove, to remove this passenger side flange, you're just going to want to get a big old crowbar and stick it in there and then whop it out. And um, it'll take a little bit of leverage, but you should be able to pop it down if you hit it good. Just to show these little uh, uh, a, a stub shaft, um, it's held in with these little snap rings that go into your carrier. So that's the force that you're having to overcome when you pry it out. On the driver's side, you just wanna remove these four bolts and try and get your pry bar in here and pry it off. Uh, I was having a real tough time with it, so I ended up just having to take my pry bar and put it in here in between the center pin and the end of the axle shaft there and pry it out and that worked a lot better. Um, don't worry about, you know, marring up this center pin because we are going to be replacing it with the new pin for the Spartan locker. Now before you move the, remove these bearing caps, uh, put a mark on them so that you know which way they go up and on which side they are because they machine the case with these in the right position. Um, and if you flip them around, it could uh, throw off um, kind of that circular bore that the bearing's going into and make it clamp weird and wear out your bearing really fast. Now you wanna remove your uh, bearing caps. And this is kind of a, a mild press fit in here with the bearings. Um, so you wanna get a, a, a pry bar on here and just kind of pry the whole carrier off. You may need to get a friend to help hold it as you pry it out. Once you get it out, you'll notice that there's these uh, shims on either side. Uh, it's very important that you remember which side these ones go in. Uh, and same with these uh, 
the, what are these, the bearing races, if you're going to be reusing your bearings, um, just because that's how your gears are all set up. And we don't want to reset up the gears. Um, all we're doing is just replacing these uh, spider gears with the locker inside. So make sure that these stay on the sides that they're going in and your gears should be just fine. You won't have to reset anything or worry about it. Once you got your carrier and ring gear out, you're gonna to wanna to get it all cleaned up back on the bench. Uh, and you're gonna to wanna to flip it over, put something under it so you don't damage the, the bearings if you are gonna be reusing them. Um, they have these little uh, like retainer tabs on all the bolts. So you just gotta use a punch or like a chisel or a flathead screwdriver and carefully bend back all these uh, tabs that are on the bolts. Um, if this has never been taken apart before, they're usually in pretty good shape and you can reuse them, but if it's been taken apart several times before and bent back up, these will usually always break off. So if you know that you're working on a differential that's been worked on before, you may want to get an extra set of these uh, tabs before you start. Once you get all these tabs bent down, you're going to want to get an impact and go around and loosen up all the bolts. You can do them like a crisscross pattern if you want, it probably doesn't matter. Um, I have done this with a wrench by hand but it is a total pain in the ass. You have to figure out a way to hold this thing down. These are torqued to about 70 foot pounds with a, like a red thread locker in there. Um, so the impact really helps, makes it a lot easier. Um, when I didn't have an impact, I had to ratchet strap this to like a spare tire and get someone to stand on it. And it, it was a total pain in the ass. So get an impact. If you don't have an impact, probably just go buy one because it's a good tool and it's worth it. Once you get these bolts out, you're going to want to go around with your punch, stick them down on the bottom of the hole, and then hit it with your hammer and go kind of back and forth to try and walk this ring gear off the carrier. You're going to want to have something soft underneath so that when it falls, it doesn't uh, damage the teeth. Once your ring gear is out, you're going to want to drive out this pin here that's holding in your cross pin um, from the top through this hole. Uh, it should come out pretty easy. This little section here in your carrier will probably be knocked over so that it doesn't fall out but it should just uh, bend it right back. If your punch isn't long enough to get it all the way out, you may need to use something like a nail to stick down in there and reach it. Once that pin's all the way out, your cross pin should be nice and loose and should just pop right out really easy. You should just be able to slide it all the way out. Once your cross pin's out, you're gonna wanna remove your spider gears. Just rotate them and they should pop right out. These guys just slide right out from the uh, from inside there. Make sure that you remove these, uh, both these thrust washers with the larger spider gears when you take them out. You do not want to put these in with the Spartan locker. It'll throw off the, uh, the distance between the two plates of the locker. So throw these in the bin or in the box. You don't want to put them back in. Next, you want to take your two drive flanges from the Spartan locker and slide them in and they should just uh, pop right in right where you took these bigger thrust bigger um, spider gears out. Remember, do not put the thrust washer in there. Now this locker has four pins and springs that uh, go in these holes. There's two on each one on the back. So to assemble these, you just take your spring, put it in a hole in the back of your pin. Oh, it's tough to do one-handed. Shove it down in there. And then you're gonna take, they have these like little bits of wire stick them in these little holes push down your pin all the way down all the way down until you get that wire in there and it retains it on these um, on these little lips and it, uh, it just makes assembly a lot easier so go ahead and do that to all four of the holes to get an assembly uh, these dry flanges kept wanting to fall out of here and it was kind of a pain in the ass so you could put some really sticky uh, grease on the back of them and it just helps keep them in there so that they stay apart uh, when you have to slide all that in. Now these parts, you got your pins all in them, clipped back, held in with their wire. There's these little, uh, I don't know, kind of circle pieces. I don't, I don't know what you call them, washers almost, that go in here. Uh, I think they're just to stop the end of the axle shaft from hitting your cross pin. You want these so that the, the larger flat piece is on the inside because your axle shaft needs to go in and take up that room that's in there. Now just take this with the, the washer in there facing the right way and drop it on in like so. Same here with the other one. 
Make sure that you do put these in so that the teeth are inner -gage, inner, inner engaging with the other teeth and that you have the spot to put the cross pin in the middle here. Um, it is easier if you put this one in first and then this one, just of how it's offset with this hole. If you put this one in first, this won't fit. Now you're going to want to get these lined up as close as possible. Uh, you'll notice they're not perfectly lined up just because the pins don't allow it, but get them lined up as close as possible. And then you're going to take a pair of pliers and pull these pins out. Once you got all four of these pins removed, you should be able to get in here and clip the whole thing together so that it lines up. There you go. It's pretty much installed. Now you gotta rotate it over and we'll slide the cross pin in. All right, now you're gonna wanna get your uh, these plates moved so that there's the, the big hole right on top for the hole for the cross pin. And you're gonna wanna spread those washers out uh, to either side so that there's room to slide this cross pin in. I'd put some assembly lube on this if you don't have any oil in here anymore, uh, just to make it go in a little bit nicer. You're gonna wanna make sure that you put this hole um, so that it eventually, once it's slid in, it lines up with uh, that hole, or with that pin. And it should just slide right in. You may have to use two hands to hold these washers back as you slide it in. And once you go to here, tip it up, make sure that your hole's lined up with your pin, and you're gonna hammer this pin down. With this pin, you may want to drive it down a little bit uh, past the, the end there and then kind of knurl this end over with a punch so it won't slide out. That seems to be how Toyota had it when I took it apart. Now we need to put our ring gear back on. You're going to want to make sure that you have these mating surfaces perfectly clean, um, totally wiped down with like brake parts cleaner so that there's absolutely nothing um, in, the, in between these two that would, uh, you know, throw off your um, the engagement of the gears. And this is a really tight fit on here. So to get it on, you're going to want to heat it up. Um, you can put it in the oven for a little bit and let it get to oh, probably about like 200, 250 degrees, and then it'll slip right on there. Um, but I'm not allowed to put things in the oven. So I just use a, a torch and just go around it for about a minute, um, just evenly distributing the heat, and then it slips right on. Um, when you do this, make sure that you have your hardware at hand ready so that as it slips on, you can put two bolts in to hold it in place, because as soon as it starts to cool, it's gonna shrink fit um, right onto the carrier. When you put your ring gear bolts in, make sure that they're all clean and that you use red thread blocker on them. Uh, it's super important to use this or else you risk these loosening out and totally destroying your diff. Now that you got all your bolts in and Loctited, um, now we need to torque them. And this is kind of the real uh, Cockford Ollie here is these things called torque rods that you use with an impact and it torques it to the right spec. You know, you got 65, 75, uh, 80 foot pounds, um, all the way up. And you can get these from Harbor Freight for about a hundred bucks and it's totally worth it. It makes it a lot easier than trying to clamp this down somehow and get a big torque wrench on there and torque them over all one by one. Um, because you're probably not going to get an accurate result if it's starting to move or if you're trying to get a friend to hold it as you torque on it. Um, I've been using these for years on tons of diffs and I've never had an issue with them um, and it makes it way easier. I do only trust them with the air impacts. The electric impacts seem to hit or impact a little bit uh, more violently than the air ones do. Um, so take a little grain of salt. Um, these bolts are torqued to 70 foot-pounds. Um, the kit only comes with a 65 or 75 foot-pound rod. I go with a 75 foot-pound rod and I just, I mean, I don't sit there with it totally torquing on it. Once it kind of seems like it's it's done and tight, I uh, stop and it seems to work great and I've never had an issue with it. it makes it a lot easier. When you torque these, you want to go in a, a crisscross pattern uh, just so that it evenly pulls the, the ring gear up. Once you got them all torqued to uh, 70, 75 foot-pounds, you then want to go around with your punch and hammer and bend up all these tabs. Um, you don't need to get them super tight. If you do that, then they'll just break. So just be light and gentle, just enough so that it's like contacting the flat surfaces of the bolt so that the chance of them loosening up is uh, really slim. Now that we got our tabs all bent over, we're ready to put this back in our uh, center section. So 
remember which side and way these uh, bearing caps go. Remember that you have these shims that go on either side of your bearing races um, and that you put it all essentially back in exactly the same way that you took it out if you're not changing the gears. Um, then everything will line up just right and you won't have to worry about backlash or any of that. Um, the bolts for the bearing caps do clean the threads really good and put a ton of uh, red Loctite on them so they don't loosen up on you because that'll cause a ton of issues. Um, these are also torqued to 70 foot-pounds, so I'm just going to use my torque rod again and zap them in and should be good to go. One other thing, because this is a slight tight fit getting this in here, you may need to use the rubber mallet to tap it in. It is helpful to put the center section or carry the, you know, the outside of the diff in a vise so that you can just drop it right in from the top. Uh, if you leave it on the workbench and try and push it in, everything kind of goes every which way and it's really uh, hard to hold. So if you put it in a vise, it's a lot easier. This one was a pretty tight fit to get in, so I did have to beat on it a good amount with the rubber mallet and then use a brass drift to tap these shims all down. But it'll go in eventually, but it is a tight fit. All right, now you're ready to put your uh, axles and the stub shafts back in. Um, I polished up this ceiling surface here just because it was starting to get a little bit of oxidation on it. It should last quite a bit longer. Um, I also covered this whole snap ring in grease. It'll just make it a slide in there easier. I also cleaned up my seal and put grease on it so that it'll seal nice and won't wear it out. And uh, put these in, you just slide them in. And then you just gotta take your hammer and This side I did the same thing, lubed up the seal. I cleaned up these metal mating surfaces on them. Um, they don't need RTV or anything on them uh, because they're, they're there's a seal past them. So this isn't the sealing surface. You could put RTV on it if you were gonna be like driving through a ton of mud and really wanted the, the most uh, protection possible, but just the bare metal's fine. All right, and then you just tighten these bolts up and uh, you're all set to go. If you do want to do a sanity check, you can check the backlash here. Um, you just want a couple thou of movement on it. If it doesn't move at all, that's not good. If it's like super, super wobbly, like eighth or quarter of an inch, um, then that's also not good. Uh, you just want a little bit of play. It should be fine if you just put everything back together as it was and it's not super worn out, but yeah, throw the diff cover on it, fill it with oil and put it in the truck and go have some fun. Um, I You're supposed to run a 75 weight, 90 oil in this. I would recommend running cheap oil for the first like couple hundred to a thousand miles. And then um, just because there's, the locker's gonna wear in really slightly uh, and there's probably crap in here from you uh, messing around in it. Um, so that's all going to get collected in the oil and then I'd change it down and then go put a, a nicer full synthetic, like maybe a Redline shockproof oil just to make the front locker a little bit happy. Um, this does only spin when you are driving off-road, so it may take a long time. Um, I mean, by driving off-road in four-wheel drive with the hubs locked. Um, so it may take a long time to get some mileage on it, but yeah, go have some fun.